Okay, first I'm going to write out the proof as though all of the premises that Norman Malcolm provides are true. And I'll just show you how this works on written out logically. Okay, so first we have, if God doesn't exist, then his existence is illogical. Wait, logically impossible. Okay, so we're going to represent if God doesn't exist by tilde G. If not God, then his existence is impossible. Okay, and then also we have, if God does exist, G, then his existence is necessary. I'm going to represent that then. Can you see this? I hope so. Either his existence is logically impossible or necessary. So we've got I or N. Then he suggests that if it is logically impossible for God to exist, if I, then the concept of God is contradictory. Okay. We're not going to mess with any of that. We're just going to see the culture. Then he says, the concept of God is not contradictory. Therefore, God exists, blah, blah, blah. I'll show you how he gets that. Therefore, he negates, he negates the possibility that the concept is contradictory, which will negate the impossibility of God. I can negate the, co the possibility that God is contradictory and therefore negate the impossibility of God. The reason that works is because if I negate the second part of this equation, then I have to negate the first. I'll show you an example. If you give me a beer, I am going to drink it. I'm an alcoholic, I'm always going to drink a beer if it's given to me. So, if you give me a beer, I'm going to drink it. I'm not drinking a beer. Therefore you know. Kill the D. Therefore you know. Kill the D. You didn't give me a beer. That's how that works. That's how you know that kill the C means kill the I. Kill the C, kill the I, kill the I means if it's not true that God is logically impossible, therefore, he must be necessary. If he is necessary, then it is very possible that God exists. Okay, I've rewritten it just a little bit more tidy so that you don't see the scribbles. So all we have to do is show that, um, that the concept of God is contradictory, and that would take all the power out of this equation. Now you can take a pick. Um, there are so many, so, so many ways to show that the concept of God is contradictory. The one that I picked is that, is, is to say that, okay, God the all-knowing, all-powerful cannot create a riddle that he couldn't solve because he wouldn't be all-knowing if he couldn't solve it, he wouldn't be all-powerful if he couldn't invent it. Okay, so, so moving right along, we know that this is not the case. So, if not till the C, therefore C. We, if we know that we have C, it leaves wide open the possibility that we do have I. I, remember, is that God is impossible. Okay, so the, the only way to guarantee 100% that our concept of God is not contradictory, even though we have all of these different ways of looking at it that, that appear contradictory, is to accept that it is contradictory, we just can't fathom how. So if we can't conceive of God, then we can actually prove that God potentially exists. Okay, so the main critique of that ontological argument is that it defines God into existence. And that can be done so easily, I just want to show you a much shorter example of doing the same. Okay, if we are to say that all things that are are things that exist. All things that are essential are also things that exist. They're materially equivalent. Okay. If we then, well, God is essential. God, if it's God, then it's essential. All we have to do then is pop out the essential with the existence. If it's God, then it exists. 
The reason I did this was to show that a position that God exists is not a reasonable, rational position. It's not a position that can be verified. Um, God can't exist through any sort of logical uh, proof without giving him qualities that are impossible to verify. And that's why I called the proof, um, Nelson Malcolm's proof, a parlor trick. That's never really stopped uh, people before. <laughs> Don't worry, if you want to believe in God, you've got faith, the concept of faith, and you'll be okay. Okay, bye.